If you're looking to produce a film, you're going to have to pony up quite a bit of cash. Even the cheapest of independent efforts can require tens of thousands of dollars to create, but that might not even be the end of your financial woes, because an unfortunate side effect of movies being such money vacuums is that they're easy targets for major lawsuits. Whether it's a real-life figure who's upset by the way they've been portrayed on film, or even those poor souls who are injured or even killed while on set, movies and legal drama are common and bedfellows, with the people who feel wronged by a particular aspect of the production often seeking financial compensation for their troubles. Now, not every case leads to a prolonged and expensive court battle, mind you, but where there's the potential for financial gain, you can be damn sure the offended party will sue the living daylights out of the studios and filmmakers responsible. We've already done a video on this very subject, but afterwards, you guys came forward with a bunch of comments showing some more examples of movie-related law suits, and so we took 10 of your suggestions and came back for round 2. I'm Will for what Culture, and here are 10 movie scenes that led to massive lawsuits, commenter edition. 10. Hedy Lamar Doesn't Get the Joke – Blazing Saddles 1974's Blazing Saddles features a character called Hedley Lamar, a corrupt attorney whose only goal is to make himself a quick buck, even if that means driving the residents of Rock Ridge from their rightful homes. Like most things in director Mel Brooks's classic satire of the western movie genre, Lamar is meant to be laughed at and not taken super seriously, but not everyone found the character to be all that funny. In fact, Hollywood film star Hedy Lamar was so offended by the film's parody of her name that she decided to sue Brooks and Warner Brothers for an eye-watering $10 million. And remember, this was back in the 70s, where $10 million was a lot more than it is today. Surprisingly, Hedy didn't make much headway with her case, and it was settled out of court for a small figure along with an apology for almost using the actress's name. Interestingly, there's even a lawsuit referenced during a scene in the film. Brooks' character mistakenly refers to Hedley as Heady before saying, The hell are you worried about? This is 1874. You'll be able to sue her. 9. Bruce Willis gets hit in the head. Tears of the Sun. Filming action movies is a complex process, requiring explosions and shootouts to be carefully staged in order to minimize the risk posed to the actors, but occasionally that risk isn't able to be nullified completely, as Bruce Willis discovered on the set of his 2003 war film, Tears of the Sun. While shooting one of the flick's many hectic action scenes in October 2002, Willis was hit in the head by a projectile and suffered, quote, extreme mental, physical, and emotional pain as a result. He subsequently sued the production company Revolution Studios, accusing the filmmakers of failing to ensure his safety. Details of the suit's settlement aren't publicly available, but if Willis had made tens of millions of dollars after pleading his case, chances are we'd have heard about it by now. So a small financial figure, if anything, seems more likely. 8. The most expensive map in movie history. Lay the favorite. Another Bruce Willis related lawsuit, this recent case doesn't directly involve the actor, but is linked to one of his films, the 2012 gambling drama Lay the Favorite. In early January of this year, map maker Victor Baker filed a lawsuit against Netflix, Amazon, and Random House Films, pointing out that the movie used some of his copyrighted work in the background of a scene without his permission. The specific work is a map of of the Caribbean island Curaçao, which can be seen on the wall of an office in the background of the film. Within the lawsuit, Baker requested $150,000 in statutory damages, or a license fee for use of the map, and asked that the company stop distributing the movie with the map scenes still included. Because this is such a recent case, we've no idea how it will be concluded, but we're pretty sure Netflix and Amazon could cobble together $150,000 from spare change down the back of their executive sofas, so don't worry for them too much. 7. Pandora's Floating Islands – Avatar up until last year, Avatar was the highest grossing movie of all time. And while there's an insane amount of money behind the film, 2.7 billion in profits, there will also be people who feel like they're owed a slice of it. And that's precisely what inspired Roger Dean to file a legal complaint against director James Cameron and studio 20th Century Fox. The lawsuit, worth a massive $50 million, was submitted in 2013, with Dean claiming that Cameron's sci-fi epic copied elements of Pandora's look from his own body of work. In particular, the lawsuit specified that the film's floating islands and ancient trees were hugely derivative of Dean's own art, and that things looked so similar that it would have been impossible for Cameron to have copied him accidentally. 
In the end, though, the suit was dismissed by a New York judge, with the court finding no substantial similarities between Dean's work and Cameron's film. 6. Netflix Accused of Defamation – The Laundromat Netflix's The Laundromat was one of the service's best original movies of 2019, but prior to its wide release, it was caught up in a complicated legal battle started by the two men at the center of its story, Jurgen Mosak and Ramon Fonseca. The duo, co-founders of a law firm that was forced to close after some of its shady dealings were exposed by the Panama Papers, launched a defamation lawsuit against Netflix in October 2019, taking issues with the scenes that portrayed them as, quote, ruthless, uncaring lawyers. In its defense, Netflix described the film's take on the two men as cartoonish, and said that director Steven Soderbergh had made a comedic morality tale before ending with the mic drop line that Mossack and Fonseca's reputations were ruined long before the release of The Laundromat. Ouch. Ultimately, a judge cleared the movie for release as planned, and upon hearing that verdict, Netflix called the lawsuit a frivolous legal stunt designed to censor creative expression. 5. Troy Dyer Gets Mad at Troy Dyer – Reality Bites Reality Bites has garnered a cult following over the years, with Ethan Hawke's performance as slacker Troy Dyer being noted as one of its best elements. But someone who didn't find the actor's role to be all that compelling was a guy named Troy Dyer, who sued the film's writer for defamation. Dyer was disgruntled by the fact that a character who was a bit of a scruffy scoundrel shared a name with him, and even though the writer declared that Dyer gave her permission to use his name – the two attended film school together – Dyer clearly hated the character and stated that his work as a financial consultant in Wisconsin had been affected by way of association with Hawke's portrayal. In the end, the lawsuit was settled when the studio released a statement saying that Reality Bites' depiction of Troy Dyer was completely fictitious. 4. School Shooting – The Basketball Diaries Starring a baby-faced Leonardo DiCaprio, 1995's The Basketball Diaries features a dream sequence in which the actor dons a black trench coat and shoots up a room full of school students. It's the kind of political firecracker that you just wouldn't see in a movie today, but back then, it didn't really cause too much of a disturbance. But that changed with the 1997 Heath High School Shooting. This tragic event occurred at the aforementioned Kentucky Secondary School where a teenager started firing on a group of praying students, injuring five and killing three. As tends to happen when violent incidents like this happen, people started to blame all sorts of different things, and the Basketball Diaries shooting scene quickly became a scapegoat due to its similarities with the real-life attack. And in fact, things got so severe that the producers and distributors of the film were sued $130 million by the parents of the deceased kids, with one of the lawyers involved, Jack Thompson, saying, we intend to hurt Hollywood. The lawsuit contended that the shooter had been heavily influenced by the violence in the Basketball Diaries, but the case was eventually dismissed, with the court unable to draw a strong enough link between the on-screen violence and the real-life violence. 3. Helicopter Accident – Twilight Zone – The Movie one of the most notable on-set accidents of all time was the helicopter crash that killed several actors for the Twilight Zone movie. The accident took place while shooting the Time Out section of the film, wherein Vic Morrow's character gets transported to a jungle in the middle of the Vietnam War. The scene, which was ultimately cut, called for Morrow to carry two youngsters across a shallow river while being chased by a helicopter, but sadly, the aircraft spun out of control, landing on the three actors and killing them instantly. As a result, the director, the associate producer, production manager, explosive specialist, and helicopter pilot were accused of involuntary manslaughter, but in 1987, five years after the accident, all five people were acquitted of all charges. Still, families of the victims earned financial compensation as a result of the deaths, with Morrow's kids said to have won around $850,000. 2. Freeway Chase Gone Wrong – Transformers – Dark of the Moon In a tragic accident on the set of 2011's Transformers Dark of the Moon, an extra was left with permanent brain damage when a steel cable snapped and smashed through the windshield of her car, striking her in the head. Gabriella Cadillo was driving her own vehicle, working as an extra while filming the movie's freeway chase scene. The cable was under a lot of tension due to it pulling a stunt car, and eventually, that tension proved too much. Gabriella was quickly airlifted to hospital and underwent emergency surgery, but sadly, she lost about a third of the top of her head, and couldn't even remember the accident. 
Shortly after, her family sued Paramount Pictures for negligence, demanding $350,000 for the negative impact the accident would have on Gabriella's personal life and career prospects. The case took a while to resolve, but eventually Gabriella's side came out on top. She was awarded with an $18.5 million settlement in May 2012, at which time she was undergoing therapy at an institute in Chicago. 1. The Crispin Glover Lookalike Back to the Future 2 Despite being offered the opportunity to return, actor Crispin Glover chose not to reprise his role as George McFly in 1989's Back to the Future Part 2, but that didn't stop the filmmakers from putting the character in the movie anyway. The way director Robert Zemeckis did this was by using footage of Glover that had been shot for the original movie, also went one step further by enlisting actor Jeffrey Weissman to shoot some new George scenes, and it was this creative choice that led to Glover filing a lawsuit against Universal Pictures. Why? Well, rather than having Weissman simply look like Weissman, Zemeckis trussed the actor up with facial prosthetics to make him look exactly like Glover. However, Glover never gave the crew permission to do this, and while Zemeckis had every right to use the character of George McFly, he did not have the right to use Glover's likeness. While the case didn't get too deep into the court system, it was eventually settled for a reported $760,000, and inspired changes in the Screen Actors Guild rules that aimed to prevent situations like this from ever cropping up again. And there you have it folks, 10 movie scenes that led to massive lawsuits, commenter edition. Feel free to leave any more comments down below, and maybe we'll be back in a year to do this one more time. I'm Will for Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.